I had a couple things go down recently in my practice and I wanted to talk about it. I got a, a great message from uh, a student who's studying with us on our subscription service and it's very typical in a way of like the stuff that I see when people contact me. Um, you know, I still get a lot of information from people where they say, you know, I can't learn online, uh, that sort of thing. And, and this student, uh, without ever having had a full session with me, he said, uh, you know, he made a huge moves at the Cal Expo event. Uh, there was everything from Muay Thai to weightlifting. And he says, because of your simple iliopsoas stretch, I made $40 and literally no joke, 10 minutes of demo. She said five doctors and no regular massage therapist had ever been able to empathize with the area. The area had such relief of tension that was pulling so bad it was acting on her abs and making her sick every time she worked out. The way Thai Massage did after such a small amount of time, she is a lifter and Muay Thai trainer from San Diego. She took a bunch of cards and said how much it saved her life and she will be emphasizing how much I helped and she felt I saved her life to people around my area as well as hers. Um, and he basically just thanks me and says, you know, it's uh, no joke, it's a domino effect. It's very common for me to get messages like that and that student, again, you know, has just studied with me online. They're not just in in-person classes, not that I'm against that. It's just that I continue to tell people we can teach them online and there's a little bit of pushback about that. Um, I continue to delineate what I teach and why. And when I was working with Suzanne Doolin, she was talking about the fact that she says, I don't tell people what I do, I tell them what I don't do. And I feel like philosophically that's a leftover from Jiddu Krishnamurti. Um, he taught through what I would generally say is negation. So instead of arriving at truth, what you do is get rid of the false. I tend to do that and I almost eschew labels. I had a conversation with a couple of apprentices about it. Uh, Judy Krishnamurti came up and the only reason I'm filing a trademark, uh, forming a new name is because people need it. They need something to latch on. They need Nike and they need the swoosh and the symbol and they're very pressing psychological issues that happen with people because of that sort of tribalism building um, a tribe as uh, Seth Godin references it so I'll continue teaching online we continue to work on things uh, the feedback from the interactive online course has been awesome uh, after the first night people said oh my back feels amazing I can't believe I got this much relief and that is a huge deal for me because that is something I have worked towards for the last 10 years or so is really getting to interactive online education and pushing those edges. Um, as I continue to work, I will always go back and redefine, reshape, question assumptions, tweak the body work, make it better. Um, when I was talking to that student online uh, briefly in Facebook Messenger, I was telling him that I think Part of the core issue, and I try to think about this, like what's the difference between what I'm teaching and what I'm seeing in the marketplace? And I think for my work specifically, I'm trying to teach it and I'm trying to develop and hone those chops, but for my work specifically, I think the issue is, is the level of communication is higher than with a lot of the other work I see. That means when the client comes in with some specific issue, my intake is more thorough, my connecting with the client is a longer uh, time duration, my working on an issue, using different tools, uh, communicating with them as we go, asking for information about how they develop this issue, you know, it just continues to like gain depth and I was told by an educator that the number one criteria about the level of improvement that a client feels with a massage therapist is in relation to how they feel about the therapist. The connection and communication is core. 
And as I think about it, I think that's a piece that I just don't consider. So for instance, when I'm in a class, students will ask me a question and I'll often ask a question to get more information to be able to give nuance and context to the, the answer that I'm about to give. And sometimes I don't know the answer because the answer is either outside of my pay grade or beyond my scope of knowledge or something that I really want them to think deeply about and like refine their own question. I'll always go back and refine, uh, tweak. Um, you know, if I try to tell people, for instance, okay, what I do, so not what I don't do, but what I do um, is a combination of compression, compression and shear, compression and shear, sometimes with active mobilization or passive mobilization. That is the most boring uh, spiel ever. Nobody cares about that at all. That is just crap uh, when it comes to marketing. What I do is I set my clients free. I use manual therapy to help them out of pain. And I do the same thing to help massage therapists thrive. At Time Massage Jam, I nearly give it away for free to the people that come and I work on. And then to students, I nearly give it away for free. It's called the Reboot Insiders Club, currently our subscription service. There will be a link uh, down below <clears throat> here on YouTube, or if this is on Facebook, I'll put one there. Um, I know for a fact that if I give more value than other educators, and if that I give more value than other therapists, I win. Now, my community wins, and my society wins, and my country wins, and my planet wins as well, but it means that I'm going to be able to continue to draw in clients and students, build a larger rapport, network with people, have positive associations because you engage in right livelihood, you help people, and you make a living doing so. I had a, another conversation with um, a colleague, and they are a subscriber. So if you recognize yourself in these, by the way, I'm not teasing anyone or making fun. Um, but we were experimenting with a new tier to our subscription service. And as we're tossing around ideas, we had had discussions about what we thought we might charge. And I was asking people in our private Facebook group that goes with the subscription service what that might be. One, what does it include? We went over that. And then I said, I don't know, like $100 a month. Now, I think $100 a month for what we were talking about offering is, is like dirt cheap dirt cheap. I mean, like for the value you're getting, oh, it's gargantuan. But when I mentioned it, someone said, oh no, I can't, no, oh, it's a hundred dollars. Like, oh, I can't afford that. It's expensive, you know? And my first thought, anytime a student talks to me about CE cost, is I go, you went to massage school. How much did that cost? How long did that take? Because I know it cost you probably $15,000. So why is me charging $100 a month in a year? That'd be $1,200. Like you could almost study with me for 14 years for what you got at the school. Now, the challenge is the therapist is now $15,000 in debt and they're getting a job where they're making $25, $30 an hour. So when you think that they have $30 an hour and then taxes are taken out, then you start to get a little closer to like some of the reasons why. Like they don't have a lot of money. And here's the thing. I'm a body worker first and educator second. And I understand financial challenges, which is why my subscription service is absolutely free for your first month. You don't get to complain to me about price anymore. I have raised my class fees. I will be raising my session fees. And that's a good thing for a variety of reasons. But if I charge you $100 a month and it costs you $1,200 a year, what does it matter if I can help you make eighty dollars to $100,000 a year in private practice? The difference is you don't think I can and I think you're dead wrong because if you watch my video 
and you watch my classes and you practice the information and you keep working at it, you're going to be able to help people out of chronic pain. $100 is not shit. It doesn't mean anything. It's not even, it's not even a gamble. Like if you got one new client a month, it pays for the $100 subscription. You see what I mean? So it's not a matter of how much money you put out. It's a matter of how much money do you make when you invest? How much money do you make when you invest in something new? When you invest in your practice, your energy, your time, your money, right? So for me, it's really interesting. I also, um, I had a class in Chicago and Austin. Um, I'm trying to like tweak some of my curriculum for in-person classes to try stuff out, get a feel for the marketplace and what's going on. So I put up an abdominal course and that course was going to be two days long, 12 hours. Really, really good at, um, abdominal work. Uh, helps women with severe menstrual cramps, helps people with low back pain, all sorts of abdominal pelvic dysfunction. Um, old scar tissue that causes pain or like uh, gastrointestinal distress, people with uh, irritable bowel syndrome or things like Crohn's sometimes get benefit. I've used this to great advantage in my own practice and then I said, hey, you know, it's time. Let's just put together the class. Let's go. It's the first time in 10 years that I can remember hosting a class in Austin and no one signed up. Not one person signed up. After all the promotion I've done over 10 years, nobody wanted the abdominal work. Then I had a class scheduled in Chicago and I, I scheduled that as well. And tonight I went ahead and took it down and replaced it with table tie because no one was signing up for an abdominal class in Chicago. If you want to make money, you have to do things other people aren't doing and offering services other people don't offer. I'll continue to make it available for pennies on the dollar. If you want to take person, you know, in-person class with me, I have to charge for that. I have to fly. I have to travel. I have to get an Airbnb. I have to pay for gas. I have to do all the things that come with it. I'm really sort of disappointed in therapists gumption in their tenacity, in their desire to just get up and go take it. Um, you know, me, as far as like my business is concerned, I feel like a bit of a Viking. I just go in and rampage like, you know, it's midnight, probably on a Saturday night and I'm making this video. Why? Because, well, this is what I do. When I get an idea, I just run with it. When I get the energy, I just run with it. I don't fight my, my own biorhythms. You will get out of your practice as much as you put in. And for me, you don't get to complain about cost. I've created a situation both organically in person with the Time Massage Jam and then online with the digital distribution of our subscription service. You don't get to complain about cost. Um, I won't even tolerate that sort of thing. If you don't have an extra hundred dollars and you think you can't make it doing body work, you need to go deliver pizza at night two days a week and make the extra hundred dollars. Just the way it is. If you're a therapist and you want it, there is nothing stopping you. But you weren't taught it in high school and you weren't taught it in massage school. Massage school gets you ready for core curriculum. My curriculum gets you ready for life as a body worker helping people in chronic pain. I can talk about what I do, but how impressive is compression? How is impressive is compression with shear? Now, how impressive is it to say, my form of manual therapy is a dy dynamic soft tissue mobilization that helps people with chronic pain. That I'm able to work on women with severe menstrual cramps using abdominal work, being able to help them when no one else can and women have no other options. When doctors basically poo-poo them and tell them to go take Midol. 
people keep looking at the work I do and I'm very focused on the mat. Um, that's an ongoing challenge with massage therapists because the massage therapists don't want to evolve. And that's fine. I mean, I'm going to keep doing what I do. My, my business is fine. Um, I have a challenge in trying to scale out what I do amongst other therapists. And it'll happen. It takes time. A client of mine well, had severe SI joint dysfunction. Came into me, worked with her once, and when she came in, she came in on a wheelchair. Um, I started going to her place because it was easier for transport. And then once I started going to her place, um, we got some good benefit to the point where when I would go to her place, she would answer the door walking. So it wasn't that you know what I did alone made her be able to walk. It's just that it, it did facilitate some of the soft tissue stuff that she needed to help her with pain. So as she was working on strength building, it helped. So it turns out she was improving and then all of a sudden she has breast cancer. Ooh, no, I don't wish that on my enemies. Um, she has continued to deal with a double mastectomy. I think it was double mastectomy. And then, um, you know, surgical scars underneath like uh, her armpit area, axillary area. So she was having radiation and the radiation was causing some problems with the skin. So she's had to take a, a quick break. But there was a small bit where she was stressed out like anybody would be going through cancer treatment. And she said, listen, I'm, I'm basically in a lazy boy. I can't, I can't get on the mat. I can't even lay on the bed, really. So I said, oh, I'll just work with you in the chair. And she's like, oh, you, you would do that? And I go over, and here's what the session looks like. And this is for you to understand. People think my work is limited to the table, or my work is limited to the mat, or it's limited to suspension, or it's limited to abdominal work, or it's limited to the chair. And it's like, no, I just work on people. And in fact, if you don't understand what I'm teaching, you think that it's limited to a certain environment. It's not. I just work on people. It's great. I can teach it. I'm going to continue refining it and make the, the translation as clear as I can. But I took out coconut oil. She's stressed out. And I put a towel underneath her feet, like worked on her feet for 20 minutes and just chatted with her. Worked on her lower leg, worked on her shins, worked on her tip anterior, around her calves, working on her feet. Now, how did she feel after 20 minutes of me doing that? Oh, she's like positively bubbly. Then I go work on her hands, work on her arm. Maybe I use a little bit more coconut oil, right? I can't do a lot to her back. I mean, she's sitting in a, in a chair in the Lazy Boy. So I do that, she kind of leans forward, leans her head forward. I work on her you know, trap kind of up here, levator scapula area, work on her neck, work on her scalp, all sitting in the chair. I'm either sitting in a, in a stool next to her chair or I'm standing up, just working on her, just mobilizing, doing what I can. And she messaged me the next day just to tell me how much better she felt, like her overall sense of well-being. You know, it's not the SI joint stuff, it's not the cancer stuff, it's just life. She's just stressed out. You know, what does it mean for her to be able to have that level of communication with me where I'm connecting with her, um, providing a sort of like support in the middle of her process? And then, you know, I kept thinking about the fact that if I had recorded that session, my students kind of freak out. Like, it doesn't look like what I normally do. But I have a challenge trying to convey why is it I do what I do. And usually, what's the quickest way to help this person? And if I think that answer is cranial sacral therapy, then I refer them to somebody else, unless I know how to do it. What's the quickest way to get her to feel better, given the certain limitations that we've got? You've got to think for yourself. I'm never going to be a guru. I'm never going to be somebody who, uh, even though I get accused of this, is going to run a modality empire, whatever they think that is. I continue to try to get students to think for themselves. And the problem is your parents don't want you to think for yourselves. And your government doesn't want you to think for yourselves. And your educational system doesn't want you to think for yourself. And your higher education facilities often don't want you to think for yourselves. We're not encouraging independent thought because it makes people uncomfortable. It makes them anxious. There's no bedrock for this is the way it always should be. Now, 
Part of the reason I had to think for myself is if I had not, I would be shooting heroin into my veins because I had to get out of pain and guess what the medical establishment did to help me with that? Almost nothing. And guess what the legal establishment did to help me with that? Almost nothing except they wrote a check, right? So when you put me in a position where you want massage therapy to be reimbursed by insurance billing, and you want me to incorporate into the medical community. Here are the conversations I have behind the scenes constantly. The clients come to me telling me they're already seeing a physical therapist and they're not getting any better. Then I work on them doing essentially what's manual therapy and they're like, oh my God, this is amazing, I feel so much better. Why can't I build insurance for this? And I'm like, I don't deal with the evil empire, that's why. Because I wanna deal directly with you, not with an insurance company. When I think about your insurance company, there are visions of Fight Club dancing in my head. You met me in a very weird time in my life, Marla. I had to think differently to get out of pain and I continue to push the edges and envelope. The students already think they know what I do and it's like, I don't know what I do. Because what happens when you add carnivore diet, Wim Hof breathing, more advanced yoga and meditation, Vipassana, what happens when you continue mining out neurohacking and optimal living and apply it to what I'm teaching? There's a reason people get angry at me. I'm sitting here corrupting the youth and I beat the money changers out of the temple. I got issues that go way back. I get the students to think for themselves. I'm not trying to create minimes. I'm trying to give them enough tools to be able to work on the car themselves and problem solve because I'm not going to be there when the person has like a unique issue. I'm not going to be there all the time to be able to answer a text message to show you how to work on whatever that is with their elbow. But if I can teach you enough about musculoskeletal anatomy and the basics of mobility, compression, compression with shear, active and passive mobilization, Ooh, well now we can work on soft tissue stuff and that's where we really shine as massage therapists and manual therapists. We really shine being able to deliver manual therapy treatments that help people in ways that physical therapists mostly do not provide. They're getting people to exercise three at a time so they can bill insurance three times. And doctors, are they providing it? Oh, what do doctors know about nutrition and what are they trained in nutrition? And it's not because I think PTs are bad or doctors are bad. I think science and research and all that's good. I just think there's a huge gap with how Western medicine is practiced. So, uh, down below, you'll find a link to that subscription service if you want more. Uh, thanks for letting me check in tonight. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to write me. Happy to chat with you. I'm available on most social media platforms to so say hello on whatever you use, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever. Uh, you guys have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon. appreciate you and your time.